Welcome to People and Places Today. Today's program is sponsored in part by Remax Edge. And now your host, Melissa DeHaven. Hello and welcome to People and Places Today. Today's show is extra special because we get to visit Unit A, the gallery of internationally world-renowned artist, Marcus Jansen. He's also gonna give us a sneak peek at his studio where he creates all of his amazing works of art. Jansen is listed in Who's Who in American Art. He's appeared on the cover of American Paintings, number 94, in 2012, and is also the next generation of artists for Vodka's Global Campaign. He's also won numerous awards for his work. Jansen's works can be found in private and public collections around the world, in Asia, Russia, Africa, the United States, you name it. We'll also have more spotlights on business, so tune in and I hope you enjoy the show. Good to see you. <laughs> Marcus Come Jansen, in. everybody. Okay, yeah, like I said, this is this is um, you know this is this is it's a huge space. It's about seven thousand square feet. Um, the whole space put together, and then I have another seven thousand next door. Um, we have six galleries in the United States right now, and we have uh, agents and uh, brokered galleries overseas uh, in Europe and and, and uh, other places and whatnot mm -hmm. in Asia. These are um, these are paintings I just did. As a matter of fact, uh, the series just came back from uh, from Russia. I showed at the Perm Museum uh, in Russia in uh, November, a show called Anonymous. And um, there was an article written about, especially this one here, I think, mm. Chaos Magazine, and this one just came wow. back. So some of these also stay in the collection. Mm -hmm. you know, they don't go back out, they stay here. I, keep, I collect my own work, so mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we put them um, So is there certain the pieces you just won't sell? Yeah, You're definitely, like, yeah, uh -huh. definitely pieces that I won't sell. This is, um, this is room, uh, Museum Room A. And uh, this is the largest space, basically. This is, some, this is most of the space out of the 7,000 square feet. And, and most of these paintings um, are part of the collection. Uh, occasionally, we do have, we had a, just an award winner right there. The green painting, um, Secret Gardens over there, is uh, just won an award, $10,000 award at the Dave Brown Projects. And, uh, wow. yeah. and what, was, what was the award for? Uh, Dave Brown Projects, as it was called. And uh, it's basically international, um, international competition. I think previous um, artists that participated were Andy Warhol and, and Rush and Burke and so forth. Wow. So that was just like this year? Yeah, this, this just, ha just happened. Wow. It just, I mean, Exciting. literally, it just happened. Yeah, it was, it was, as a matter of fact, um, it was about uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Yeah. Wow. And that won first prize uh, in that. Beautiful. And um, can we like just take a walk and look through some of them? Yeah, these are some of the, uh, some of these are older. These are paintings between, I would say, 2009. And 2012, uh, the new paintings from 2013 aren't in here yet. Mm -hmm. So I have them next door. Um, and some of these are part of the collection. Yeah. And is your work, is it like, I heard of it described as urban expressionism, is mm -hmm. that correct? Is that like your own? Um, well, no, it's, 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 really, uh, it's really a term that describes um, more the, the technique and the application mm -hmm. uh, of the paint. Um, I don't really like the labels personally. I mean, mm -hmm. it's sort of because uh, it kind of box you into mm -hmm. to, to feeling like you can only do that. You mm -hmm. know? Um, but I've had. So is that something like just an art critic came up with, like, or yeah. is that? Yeah, more or less. Uh, well, Donson, <laughs> Donson, my, my friend and art historian uh, Jerome uh, Allen Donson, he referred to it as that. But but there's so many. You know, historians look at the works and they have so many different mm -hmm. terms. Like, it's also probably you would consider it maybe postmodern work. I mean. Uh, uh, Carl Schwartz, a professor at FGCU, he was talking about it as um, uh, monochromatic paintings. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's, there's so many different terms that you can really use to describe the works. But uh, I, guess I try to stay away from the labels. Yeah, I, I, I work on. Um, I mean, what's important to me is, is, is uh, not just um, the topic or subject matter, but it's also the application of the paint and exploring of the paint itself and what the paint can do. You know, I use mm -hmm. all enamels. So you don't have, um, I don't use the, um, the tube oils. Mm -hmm. They're too stiff for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I find that too, too limiting. So I usually um, go with the oil enamels, which are really easy, and they, they, you can do anything with them. You can use uh, turpentine to thin in them. You can manipulate them in any way you want. Um, so that's always been my preference as far as materials are concerned. And then you know, a lot of it is mixed media, too. You know, I add uh, elements of um, paper and so forth. Mm -hmm. in it, you know. but, uh, do you have a particular favorite piece of your own? Yeah, I have, well, I mean, the, I have many. I mean, I think all of them sort of, you know, they're like children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have, you sort of uh, fall in love with all of them uh, one way or another. But 
This one uh, just sold to uh, an NBA player in New York. Uh, oh, we're wow. shipping that out next week. Uh, wow. That's why it's got the red dot. Yep, he just he just bought that one. So this one just sold. This one this one is one of my favorite pieces. I would say this one is actually the newest piece from last year. This is I yeah, I haven't seen this. One you didn't yet. see this one? I haven't seen yeah, this. Yeah, it also one won yet. an award wow. uh, from uh, Aesthetica magazine <clears throat> in uh, in the UK wow. just recently. That is just uh, sold right after that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's very instinctive. The, the paintings are very instinctive and, it's, and they're very emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't, uh, I don't try to limit the, uh, the work uh, with any kind of preconceived notions as to what it's going to look like in the end or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's oh, sort really? Of, no, just... not at all. Yeah, it's just, it's really an exploring of the mm -hmm. paint and the paint sort of takes me to places, you know? um, wow. So I allow it to communicate with me, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, versus sort of dictating to the canvas and say, uh, you know, having reference and doing exactly what I see on the reference or mm -hmm. something, you know? That, that doesn't really interest me. And much. you actually were in the you were in the military, mm -hmm. right? For in, in the actual war, you were in one. Of yeah, the yeah. I was I was in the first Gulf War, uh, 1991, in Desert Storm. That was my first assignment, and uh, it was with uh, Fort Bragg with the uh, Airborne. <clears throat> I was there for for about nine months and came back, uh, and then I was overseas in Korea for one year at wow. the DMZ, wow. and then uh, yeah, I did a lot of traveling back and forth, and then I went to Germany for one year. Mm -hmm. uh, for two years, actually. And you lived in Germany for... Lived in Germany for a long time. Oh. Went to school there. Graduated in Germany. Um, Did you study art there, too? Mm -hmm. Studied yeah. design, art and design. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, came back. And then after that, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, so I joined the service. And I, was, I joined the service and actually came back here. Yeah. Uh, this, is one of my, this is one of my personal favorites. This is the one that you saw on the New American Paintings. Oh, yeah. And... Um, this is the original painting. I don't own it anymore, unfortunately. Oh. My, one of my strongest collectors bought it uh, last year, or a year and a half ago now. So he's just loaning it to us. It's actually going back to him pretty soon. It's my all-time Really? Favorite. I love like this one, yeah. too, a lot. Yeah, I, like I this remember one this one. You had, you had the solo exhibit at the Sydney and Byrne Davis Art Center. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's this right. was my favorite. Yeah. That's right. And this is another one I had a hard time um, I haven't even showed it since then. It's always it's been here, mm -hmm. and um, I haven't really uh, wanted I, to. Even I take love it that it it like has night and day and just the the destruction of, yeah. of things here. But then the butterfly off kind of to the side is a symbolism for like exactly. the new beginning yeah. and. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, I always I always play with the with you know the. Um, the paradoxes between um, happy, sad, and and, and uh, you know, good and evil, maybe mm -hmm. even, you know, in the paintings. Um, so I try not to one-sided. You know, I, I want the, the the picture, even if it's just one painting, to have uh, a combination of both. The ball is very typical for my paintings, mm -hmm. which sort of symbolizes to me sort of a sense of innocence, mm -hmm. um, playfulness, playfulness yeah. maybe innocence mm -hmm. and playfulness. Yeah. yeah. And, and then uh, the tires too. You always, I always see the tires. Yeah, that's 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 been that's been a that's been a typical thing. I don't know. I, I started doing those a long time ago, and then now it's sort of it just became part of my landscapes every time I do them. Yeah. I try to make every one of them um, as unique as possible. I mean, you notice that every every one, you know, although there's a style uh, similarity, but everyone is completely different in its in its character. And that's sometimes it's, it's sometimes difficult, but you can. I try to push the, uh, the boundaries of the paint and the colors that I choose and so forth. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, this, is, this is sort of initiated from um, a conversation of um, a lot of the, the uh, Monsanto and, and, and these big corporation activities now, um, uh, GMO and so forth and things like that. You have these giant mushrooms, for example. Mm -hmm. You've got these guys in the business suits coming in. It's almost like the... Uh, uh, the new fields of uh, of control. Yeah. And I work with these 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 huge um, brush strokes, ab maybe abstract or action painting brush brush strokes, where they just. Uh, I'm not so much out for definition. I'm more out for uh, uh, expressing freely. That's important to me. Wow, isn't his art amazing? We'll be back in just a few minutes with Marcus Jansen and a look at the space where he creates his masterpieces. And now, our Spotlight on Business with Hotel Indigo and the Broadway Bistro. 
Now, is there anything particularly special that you would love to tell us about Hotel Indigo? Well, I, I think it's important for people to know that Hotel Indigo is a part of the intercontinental hotel chain. Mm -hmm. We're their luxury boutique brand. Beautiful. So all mm -hmm. of our hotels, all the Indigos throughout the world are smaller but more luxurious than any other hotels. Oh, wonderful. Can we have a tour? Absolutely. Yeah. Would you like to see a room? I would love to. Great. Thank you. Melissa, this is one of our typical rooms that has a king-size bed. Oh and this room goodness. also features a pull-out couch. Well, here you get a you choice. Choices. We also have uh, free robes for the oh, guests to use when they're nice. here staying with us. And I like this kind of room, especially because it has two sinks in the bathroom. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness, look nice. at this bathroom. The and detail we have good is just very large showers. Oh my goodness. Let me take you upstairs to our roof so you can see we have a beautiful fitness center, swimming pool, and a nice bar and a great view of the river up oh, there. Oh, wonderful. Let's okay. go. Wow. This Isn't this a gorgeous view? This is our bar area, mm -hmm. and this bar is open seven days a week. We're open um, usually during the week at about 5 o'clock and mm -hmm. on the weekends around noon. Mm -hmm. We have specials up here. Um, on Wednesdays we have Wicked Wing Night, and on Thursdays we have Ladies Night. Ooh, Ladies Night. Yes, and it's from 9 p.m. to 1, and they drink for free. Oh, so it's fun. Oh, yes. We have a lot of live entertainment up here, usually on Fridays and mm -hmm. Saturday nights, and during Ladies Night we also have entertainment. Wow, nice. And it is open to the public, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be a hotel guest to come up and enjoy the the view, mm -hmm. enjoy a drink, and just have a nice evening with your friends. Well, now that you have a chance to see our lovely hotel, would you like to go see our brand new restaurant, Broadway Bistro? I'll introduce you to Michael, our new food and beverage manager. I'd love to. Great, this was great. Let's go Thank see you. It. Thank you. This is, I'd like to introduce you to Michael. Michael's our food Hi, and Michael. beverage director. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, thank you. So what, what type of food do you offer here? Uh, well, the chef calls it a uh, farm to table fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, does the best he can to get local ingredients for local purveyors, whether it be uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, meats, chicken, beef. Tries to get it as close to home as he can. Mm -hmm. That way it's as fresh as can be. Uh, nothing comes in frozen. And, That's um, great. Right Supporting local, the table. very fresh, delicious. And are you open for breakfast and lunch We're and dinner? We're open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, on Sundays, we also have a, a beautiful Sunday brunch. Mm -hmm. Oh, delicious. And now, what about entertainment? I know that. Do you still have a saxophone player? Yes, we have. Um, we have music on Art Walk mm -hmm. and Music Walk, mm -hmm. and other special event nights when there's something special going on in Fort Myers. And at the Sunday brunch, we have a jazz player. Oh, okay, wonderful. And if you'd like to view them, I had the chef prepare some of his uh, featured meals for you. Okay, that would be great. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, first thing we have for you is uh, the chef's ahi tuna appetizer. Mm -hmm. Then we have his herbs de Provence chicken. Uh, completely organic chicken breast rolled with herbs de Provence. We have his famous miso salmon. Uh, miso glazed salmon over jasmine rice, again with some black and white sesame seeds. And uh, finally, his uh, veal and wild mushroom meatloaf. Just added uh, the two for 20, where you get two salads and two uh, selected entrees for $20. Every Monday and Tuesday from open to close. This is room two. Um, this is sort of uh, more like a sort of a lounge area. Yeah, pretty much, because I, well, I went, after high school, I went to the School for Design, and um, so that was before the military, so that was about 20, you know, 21, 22, uh, and then I was in the military for, um, you know, almost eight years, yeah, wow. and then I uh, came out the military, and um, there was sort of, in many ways, it was the only thing I really wanted to do, you know, I didn't want to get, I was never one for an ordinary job or anything mm -hmm. like that, and mm -hmm. I just had, especially after the military, yeah. And uh, that was enough of like, you know, sort of telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had a, had a huge yeah. problem with that. <laughs> and uh, so, so I got out and I decided to, uh, that I wanted to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And now uh, you so were in New York, right? Yeah, I went to New York City in 99, went back mm -hmm. to New York in 99 and set up on the street. I was selling, selling works on the street uh, between Prince Street and Broadway. There used to be have a little corner there where artists used to set up. Wow. In those days, I don't know if they're still there, but Prince Street and Broadway was packed with, you know, artists and painters at that time, and um, that's when uh, 
Giuliani was there. He was kicking us off the block at the time. Yeah. But um, <laughs> and uh, no, we, we did we did we did a lot there, and the gallery started showing attention, and so I went back to Germany. They started showing attention from seeing your works on yeah. the street. Yeah, from seeing the work oh, on the street, okay. and um, you yeah, know, and that's kind of what gave me sort of the thumbs up because I needed sort of, I needed a some kind of uh, validation, especially in New York because New York is a huge hub. Uh, with all the competition and everything. So they started paying me attention, and after that I went back to Germany, uh, had a few shows, had my first solo show in Germany, and then decided to come back to the States because I felt it was going to be easier for me to operate from here. Uh, uh, so I came back to, uh, so we actually came, went to Atlanta, set up there first, and I showed in the first few galleries in Atlanta. And then my first big break was um, Ford Motor Company's commission. I did four paintings for Ford Motor Company uh, for the 100th, uh, 100th anniversary, I think oh, it was. Wow. And um, yeah, so is so. that when you knew, like, wow, okay, Ford Motor Company's noticing, like, I mean, well, you well, were in galleries and stuff everywhere yeah. too, but yeah, it was, it was, it was. Is that was, the uh, moment where you knew, like, well, well, it was a financial boost for one, you uh -huh. know. So it was a, it, I think financially it was a boost, and, and um, it sort of it gave me enough uh, money to continue to sort of uh, get materials and paint and things like that. And I had a side jobs; I was working two side jobs at the time. This is one of the. This is well. This is another 3D. This is what like what you saw before, but this is uh, this is how it's supposed to be hanging. It's going to be on a wall, and um, again another aerial view. Uh, I like this one. I think you told me on one of your one of your paintings like this, you just used like what you were using as your palette. Yeah. Do you still do yeah. That? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, these these happen. Yeah. Very coincidental. If you, if you believe in coincidences, um, I used to work instead of you know most artists have like these uh, paint panels and and I used to use uh, if I mix my paints I would just do it on these tabletops yeah, the tabletops hanging around and I would just put the paint um, you know cross the paint together mix the paint together and um, and out of that I just there was one tabletop, I think the first one I did, and it was hanging around the studio for the longest time. It was there for, I don't know, must have been like for a year. And I had people come in, and they always saw this tabletop hanging there. And they were like, well, it was like what's, what's, what's the deal with the tabletop? This is an interesting, interesting piece. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, really, it's not really a piece. So, you know, it's sort of my, my palette. And I started looking at it, and the more I looked at it, was the more I saw was, was, it was very interesting. And um, I, I uh, kind of worked on it and changed it a little bit, and that's sort of how the... Uh, the, the views uh, are merged. Yeah. Are the majority of the ones that are, are, are they three, is it three dimensional? Mm -hmm. Three dimensional. The majority of the three dimensional pieces from your actual paint or just? Uh, well, the, these, no, the, these have been actually, these have been made from, from, from the beginning. It's actually on canvas now, mm -hmm. but I had, I think the first five or six, and we sold, I think four of them almost immediately, mm -hmm. um, that uh, they were on tabletops. So those were actually tabletops that I had in the studio. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, but then it sort of it just became uh, interesting and I started working on it and exploring it. And these came out of it. And these actually showed at uh, Scope. I think you were there. Mm -hmm. you did yeah, Scope, I was right? at Scope. Yeah, Scope, yeah. Scope at Art Basel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, not last year, but the year before, I think. Yeah. This, this, is, this is the studio. We are here exclusively with Marcus Jansen in where all the magic and creativity happens. And I'm so excited because look at the raw, the rawness of true art. This is it. This, this is, is it. This incredible. Is it. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, we, we got this. Um, this is kind of how it looks all the time. And I'm actually in the middle of working. So it's, um, I actually feed off things sort of like laying around and everything because mm -hmm. I feed off imagery. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, of course, a different climate than, than, uh, than the showcase room. And is this your space right here? This right. is your art space? This is the art. This is, this wow. is what I'm working at right now. That's a, that's a painting I'm working wow, on right now. So this is, this is. So uh, you just have it all right here and you can just yep. grab and go. Yep, you go right at it. Wow. And uh, this is some, this is an unfinished piece. Everything about it is just like so amazing. Like even where you work, yeah. like yeah. says in your pieces, like it's yeah. Yeah. unbelievable. Well, you know, like wow. I said, I feed off the environment too. And that's why I, I didn't want to paint in an environment that was too clean. Yeah. Because it, I think it would have reflected in the work. So, I mean, just having this sort of um, architecturally sort of antique place. I mean, it's from 19, the building was built in 1920. Yeah. And, you know, and um, so this, this is, uh, and this is actually, this used to be a refrigerator of some sort or a cooling area. Uh -huh. And they used to have, 
Um, I mean, first of all, the, the place was uh, sort of a storage for food. And um, they used to sh store, um, I think, dry food there. I think if you look over there, you'll see some of the signs that are still hanging. Those are the original signs, or at least the signs when I came in, mm -hmm. they were there. And this is, uh, <laughs> and this is where I go with the kids. <laughs> And, uh, it's like your own is, playground. Yeah, this is like my own playground. And, yeah. And, you know, um, kids work in here a lot. Yeah, this is sort of, well, actually, you know, in the summer it gets, very, it gets hot in there. Mm -hmm. um, so this is sort of a cooling area. There's an AC in here. And, um, you know, this is kind of like a, and even when I do lo uh, smaller works, you know, the smaller mm -hmm. works, I sit there with the, this is the kids' table. Mm -hmm. So the kids do their things right. there. And, uh, and they can just play, and they can get dirty, and they can mess themselves up, and, and you know, I don't have to tell them, no, you can't do that. I mean, it's yeah. a place where you can basically yes. do what you no want. You go, you, no, 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 <laughs> and you can uh, and you can go home and then you know take a shower. These are actually Elias's work. This is Elias. That's Elias. That's Elias. These are all Elias's oh, works. These are all the kids. Yes. Yeah, these are my boys' work. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. yeah, wow. all my boys' work. He's been Good doing. The way you're influencing them. Yeah. Amazing. Yep. This is all their work. And. Um, America. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, he, well, they. I mean, they are. I mean, you know, like I've always said, I think we're all artists anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is in. We bring them in, and then I line them up on these poles, and then paint sometimes multiples at the same time. Oh, really? Yeah. So I can, I can do. So you can I, see what you're. Yeah, what, what, what you're I'm, what I'm yeah. doing, and also. Um, when you're um, inspired in that moment. Of yeah. Mm -hmm. And I usually, uh, usually do first phases. The paintings are created in different phases. So I usually start in the first phase second, third, and fourth phase, uh, and then just, just, just paint, paint them through, yeah. yeah. Marcus, I'm so excited to do, like, allowed us to come into your space. Oh, yeah, like, well. this is, like, the most personal, oh, so yeah. I really appreciate, yeah, sure, no like, problem, no like problem, sharing yeah, this yeah. with us. Oh, that's great, yeah, and this is, well, you get a raw look here. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. this is, this is, n nothing hidden here. I mean, this mm -hmm. is just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are the paintings for the uh, aluminum, um, Aluminum Perfume Company, and uh, the company's owned by one of my biggest collectors, and um, he commissioned commissioned me to do these uh, do these four paintings, actually eight paintings total. There were, there were eight total, but four of these long bottles, and then the other four were shorter bottles. You know, and, uh, and and aluminum is actually the perfume that Kate Middleton wore. Yeah, Kate, when she Kate, got married. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one. Which I, I think I think it was. I, I'm not sure when he bought the company, but basically she wore the perfume and, and it was a huge success. And uh, thank you so much, Marcus. What a treat. You're welcome. To see Unit A You're and, welcome, and really to get like a real in-depth look at where you work and You're your welcome. surroundings. Always welcome to stop by. Uh, thank you so much. And you need to come by to Unit A the first Friday of every month during Art Walk and come see Marcus Jansen's beautiful paintings and his exhibit. Thank you, Marcus. Right. Right. See you. Bye. <laughs> Take care. And now, a spotlight on business with the shops at Broadway and Space 39. We're here at the shops at Broadway with partner Elijah. Elijah Masafi. Elijah Masafi, hello. Yeah. Good to see you. We've been here about five weeks now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of uh, really neat, funky, cool, avant-garde mm -hmm. uh, things by uh, handcrafted local art. Uh, we have a gourd room. We have gourds uh, uh, Look at some of this, some from of this Georgia, this some from beautiful. California. We have two different artists that, that, that uh, make the gourds. Mm. And I've never seen anything like this. This is right. really Right, these incredible. are rain barrels. They capture wow. uh, rainwater. Are very reasonably affordable. Here we have um, a, a necklace, a jade necklace, okay, uh, with real garnet, real mm -hmm. silver, real jade, sixty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. These cars here, mm -hmm. uh, wooden cars, are handcrafted by a gentleman that has one hand. Here we have a copper room, where we actually have uh, every all. This is where we have art that's outside of the local area. We have four pieces in here that are actually from a well-known Russian artist. Uh, outside of that, everything here is local. Oh. Everything in this room uh, is either by the father, the son, or the father and the son. This is an eclectic oh, wow. piece that he and the son created. This Dan? Tell, yeah, this tell, wow. actually tells your life story. I've never seen this one. Uh, That's here, incredible. Here. Well, thank you so much for, for you know letting us in and seeing the shops at Broadway. And you should make sure you come by to check it out and see all this beautiful, amazing artwork. Come and say hello to Elijah. Very friendly, 
beautiful place. Come Thank and check you. it out. Thank you very much. We're at Space 39, Art Bar and Lounge. I think we should go on inside and take a look and see the atmosphere and see if we can get some more information from Sarah, the bartender. Come on, let's go. Okay, we're here inside Space 39 and I'm here with Sarah and she's gonna tell us all about the fun, entertaining things to do here at Space. Sarah? Oh, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Space 39 and, sure. and what kind of specials maybe you have and entertainment, what you have in store for the week? Okay, we're located right inside the patio daily on downtown Fort Myers. Mm -hmm. um, we're an art bar and lounge. We have live entertainment throughout the week from jazz to blues to um, just about anything. Mm -hmm. And you have specific nights for jazz. So if you, if you love jazz, you can come out on and Thursdays are jazz uh -huh. and then Fridays and Saturdays are blues. Um, but we also have entertainment on Wednesdays as well. Um, Sarah Hattica plays on Wednesdays. Oh, beautiful. Um, and then happy hour throughout the week also. We have happy hour every day from 4 to 7. Mm -hmm. um, and what kind of specials do you have at your happy hour? Happy hour is $3 wells, mm -hmm. um, $3 domestics, $5 glasses of wines, and $4 import beers. So. Okay, wonderful. And I know everyone probably raves about like the loungy atmosphere, the art. It's, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, we're very well known for our art and the mm -hmm. loungy feel. Um, the art actually changes every 30 days, which mm -hmm. is really neat. It gives mm -hmm. a different appeal every time you come in. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay, wonderful. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Come see us. Well, that's our show for this week. Next week, we begin feature segments on music and entertainment. So tune in and be sure to check out our website at peopleandplacestoday.com to see previously aired segments, spotlights on business, and sponsored links. And if you're interested in spotlighting your business on People and Places Today, please contact us at peopleandplacestoday at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. See you next week.